was always there, always giving, always supportive. And a little before his passing, I was able to, to give back. I was able to take him around to hospital visits. And he was always just pouring out his love, pouring out his thanks. Always just saying how oh, like, appreciative he is of what we're doing. And I told him that, look man, as a child, you might not know or what you were doing for me. The impact that it had on my life. And it was so much that I told him that, look man, you're not even have to tell my thoughts. You know? So really sad but we know he's in a better place and the legacy that he has left for his family friends and all who came in in his path will live on and to the family to the immediate family mark um his wife his daughter um he's strong and god will take us through. for the life of Robert Lindsay. We passed this way once, stated Phillips, Philip Rose. And in that passing, he deliberately pointed out that if there is any good thing that we can do, let us do it now, because we will not pass this way again. Robert Ezekiah Lindsay's journey through life started on September 30, 1942, in the community of Windsor Forest in the parish of Portland. Robert, also known as Bob, was the last of his parents' five children, all of whom have predeceased him. His parents, Seabird Lindsay and the Pearl Dunn, grew him up between the communities of Windsor Forest and the Long Bay. Robert got his early education at the Royal Hill Primary, then elementary school, and used this to his advantage to maneuver his way in life. Among his accomplishments, he formed a union with Lydia Lindsay, and they later got married in 1974. This union produced two children, Barbara and Mark. They lived together as man and wife until he passed away on November 2, 2020. Mr. Lindsay picked up many life skills as he navigated life and he used them to advance himself and the family and by extension those with whom he came in contact. He was employed as a lifeguard at the then hotel in Long Bay Square and the diligence with which he carried out his duties impressed a guest, Dr. Wells, who offered him a job at the Jamaica flour mills. His duties throughout the period at this establishment included operating the forklift. Robert loved the people and he cared deeply for family and friends. It is of special note that when he was offered the job at the Jamaica flour mills, he told his employer that he would not take the job if he did not employ his closest friend. That wish was granted, and both of them were employed. He lived in Kingston for a period, but returned home in the 80s and built his house in Commodore. He took pride in building his house and work assiduously to dig down those rocks and create a space that would be his home for years. 
is tenacity, positive work attitude and ambition could be seen as he made Commodore's home and traveled to and fro his work in Kingston. He worked at the Jamaica Floor Mills until his redundancy in 1984. His work ethics and commitment to his job were commendable. And so afterwards, he was called back to work. He worked there until his retirement. He loved to farm. And so he took up farming in his latter years. He always spent a lot of time at his nearby farm and was delighted in growing cash crops to the most, the most of which he gave away. Robert decided to change his life and made the important decision to serve his maker and Lord. And so he was baptized and has been a member of the Victory Temple Assembly of God up of your prospect Portland for the past 12 years. He is noted for his loving, quiet, kind, and respectful nature. He is always willing to help in whatever ways he can. Robert loved the cricket. He would watch or listen to cricket competitions any time of the day. His interest and enthusiasm for the game would be visible whenever he met with his colleagues and was discussing the game. He had a sense of humor, loved to interact with his colleagues, loved to play with his grandchildren, and to ride his bicycle. His love for children caused him to raise children who he treated as his own. He participated in community activities, and was notable for giving his support, especially at grave diggings. As Robert's health gradually deteriorated over time, he moderated his activities, but still did the things he loved. Forty days ago, at the age of 78 years, Robert Ezekiah Lindsay suddenly left us to be with him. He survived by wife, Lydia Lindsay, children, Elvis, Barbara, Sophia, O'Neill, and Mark, 23 grandchildren, and the three great grandchildren. May his soul rest in peace, and God's perpetual light shine on him. about Brother Lindsay, you have heard the details of his life. I think I just saw Brother Adrian, so we'll have that musical interlude now, and for a little while. And then we will take the selection from Victory Temple, and by that, Mr. Adrian will be ready to share his tribute. Have my baby 
You know I just cannot live without you The Bible says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye when the trump of God shall sound. And what we see happening around today, we know that trump is going to sound very soon. So I am saying to us, those of us who are in the audience of my voice, if you have not yet made it right with your maker, now is the time. Tomorrow is promised to no one. Now is the day of reckoning, the day of salvation. Because if you die without Christ, whether you believe it or not, there is a hell. And don't believe what some people say, that you're going to burn up and then you cease to exist. The hell is going to be everlasting. And there is no repentance down there. And so I give God thanks. For my brother-in-law. You know, I know him. And he's always that person that he show his real self. Well, to me, you know, if he's upset, I know. Can you hear him begin to stutter a bit? But whenever I hear him up, you know, he's always pleasant. And he, he, he seems to understand how to deal with situation. All of us face problems. And we have our challenge. And we face it in different ways. Bob is a person who he, he, will, he will be quiet. If he's having a challenge, he doesn't go and express it. But you can know. If you know him well, you can know that there is a challenge there. And I want to thank God for him. 
that regardless of the challenge, he put his trust in God and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior and Lord. So I give God thanks for him. And so may his soul rest in peace as the challenge go out to every one of us that make your calling and selection sure because you know not the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall put his appearance or when you will cease to exist in this world. May God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Worship the Lord. the Lord. That was a good tribute and good encouragement. Come on, Amen. I'm going to be sharing a word from the Lord, from the Word of God with you. And I had it planned for 15 minutes, but I'm going to try to do it in 10. All right? I'm using the context of Brother Lindsay's death to speak with you this evening. The context of his sudden death. He died suddenly. Many persons die and they have had opportunity to go through long sicknesses or we had a hint that they are going to leave us soon. But on this occasion, even though Brother Lindsay had medical diagnosis, he was going on and the suddenness of his passing really shook up a lot of us. So I'm using that suddenness because a lot of things are happening suddenly. And when I look into scripture, a lot of things are going to happen suddenly. How do we respond to those things? When we talk about suddenly, we are talking about immediately. Yes. We are talking about unexpectedly. We are talking about something happening at a time when you think not of it. Oh, something happening as it were out of nowhere. Suddenly disturbs our equilibrium. Suddenly takes us off track. Suddenly catch us unawares. So the scripture that was read this afternoon from the book of Ecclesiastes. 9 and verse 1 to 5 and 10 to 11. The 11th verse said, the, Solom the wise man Solomon penned these words. For man also knoweth not his time, as the fishes are taken in an evil net, and as the birds are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Suddenly, as I said, when it comes, it comes unexpectedly. And because of that unexpectedness, then we are shaken. But I am telling you this afternoon, maybe something that, not that you did not know, but something to cause to steer your thought and for you to think again is that the God that we serve, the almighty God, the creator, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, he is a God of suddenly. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. God deals with us in a timely manner. God gives us time in which to live and in which to operate. But Bible recalls on many occasions that God acted suddenly. Yes. Uh, hallelujah. Yes. And God is God, so we question him not. He acts suddenly. A few examples of uh, the sudden appearance of God is one that God acts suddenly in angel appearances. Amen. Amen. For when we read and we see accounts accounts made of angels appearing to anyone at all those biblical characters we did not see anywhere that they got notice the angels appeared suddenly angels appeared suddenly to Mary and made the announcement that a virgin would conceive and bear a son and he would be the savior. Angel appeared 
at the empty tomb and said he's not here he is risen ah jesus himself appeared suddenly to the two men who were walking on a mass road so God appears suddenly. Then we have sudden recovery. Sometimes we are going through a period of suffering and pain and problems and heartaches and the days turn into weeks and the weeks into months and the months into years. And we begin to wonder when is this going to end? But God has a way about him. God is able to respond suddenly. Somebody worship the Lord. Somebody worship the Lord. Bless the Lord. Ah, for the children of Israel were taken into captivity. All right. Hallelujah. And they were in Babylon. Amen. And they spent numerous years. Years that hurt them. Years that caused them to long for sweet fellowship. As a matter of fact, the psalm is in that by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Hallelujah. He said, we hung our harps upon the willows. We hung up our harps. We did not sing. We did not worship. We did not praise God. Hallelujah. Because we were wondering, when would we be released from the captivity? They said they refused to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. Somebody Amen. worship him. Praise the Lord. But one day God came in for recovery and deliverance. Hallelujah. Praise Somebody God. worship God. Hallelujah. You're going through your problems. You're going through your strife. You're going through your trouble. One of these days God will appear. Amen. And he will show suddenly. Although they were expecting deliverance. Although they were praying for something to happen. When it happened, it caught them by surprise. Because it happened suddenly. Somebody worship God. Somebody worship God. And so when God turned up for the Israelites in the Babylonian captivity, and when God delivered them, and said in Psalm 126 that when the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like then that dream. We never expect it, but he turned up suddenly. Somebody worship God. For God is able to turn up suddenly in your situation and turn things around for his God alone. Somebody give him glory. It doesn't matter what you're going through right now. God is able to show up suddenly. So you might be suffering for years, but God will do it again. Praise God. Pentecostal experience. Where the 